Morning. Morning, people. Good morning. Welcome aboard. Don't know how this is going to go today. Um, I imagine there'll be quite a lot of really happy people out there today. But Davey's not so happy because yesterday Facebook, um, he edited one of my videos saying that I had infringed somebody's copyright. I don't remember me ever infringing anybody's copyright because Davey does his own thing. So thanks for sharing that video yesterday, folks. It went really well and thank you very much for it. Uh, I'd like you to carry on sharing my videos no matter what Facebook tries. And if there is bits that are blocked too, you can get the full version of the video uploaded on YouTube each day. Okay, but it would appear like Facebook's messing around with us. Right, there's more than 100 years on board, so let's get this broadcast underway. It's Indy Truck TV, put the truck in at home in his office in Salisbury, North Lancashire, where it is a beautiful morning, sunny and 17 degrees. That's the weather forecast for Salisbury, North Lancashire. If you want to know what the weather's like where you are, look out your own bloody one day, all right? Wednesday starting with one main team in the rags, Bojo hanging on by a thread. Two big hitters in the cabinet, um, a Javid and Sunak, start an avalanche of junior ministers resigning. And uh, since the 5th of July 2022, 49 members of Johnson's government has resigned. But Johnston goes on. Right, moving on, Wednesday, in Bojo the Clown writes to the First Minister Nicola Sturgeon to tell her Westminster will not give Scotland a uh, Section 30 order to transfer powers to hold in the F2. In his letter, Bojo didn't say no. He followed the same line, the same shite as Theresa May, and says now is not the time. All right, now we wait on the Supreme Court ruling on whether a referendum can be held without Westminster say so. It may well be a plebiscite election right enough, folks. Okay. Now, what did, what did we learn from Bojo's letter? That Scotland's, uh, what we learned was uh, Scotland's democracy is set in class in the UK and that Scotland's people are somehow subhuman, and that our democratic rights are not the same as others on these islands. All right, so we're now living in a prison and a colony with no say over our own futures, allegedly. Even if we take uh, all the seats in the Westminster election, Westminster will try to hold us prisoner. The criminal cabal, and that includes the Labour Party, are, the, are democracy deniers, and it is time to hunt them out of Scotland. The keyboard warriors, it's time to go on to your keyboards, especially to uh, uh, um, Labour and to Tory politicians, MPs that is, and demand that Scotland's democratic rights be observed. And then it'll be time to move on to the next step, and that will be public protest. And that would probably be outside government offices and MPs' offices, those who are denying us our democracy. Because this just cannot go on. We are in a, a, we are in a union. There are treaties of union. We don't need others, uh, the other partner in the unions, say, to rip up that treaty. And it's time our politicians grew some and made it clear it's time our Westminster MPs, all 46 of them, stood up and be counted. They went down there to settle up. They didn't go down to settle in. But we now know that we, live, uh, we are a colony for the exploitation of our resources and our democratic rights are not to be observed. Okay, moving on. Wednesday, in Alistair Union Jack, the Governor-General of the Scottish Colony, gives his full backing to Bojo the Clown. Chief traitor to his people and democracy denier has still got his tongue firmly up Bojo's arse. All right, morning, John. Moving on Wednesday, Rod in Scotland tells us that a, um, under the fascist regime in Westminster, Scotland's colonial college system will need to change their funding model to survive. All right, this comes as our imperial masters cut Scotland's funding by 5% in this fiscal year and 2% for the next five years. So in total, Scotland's budget over the next five years will, will have been cut by 15%. The people are already starving. Our public services are under stress because of lack of money. And the criminal cabal doing south, no matter which colour of arse it is that's in the door, well, they are reducing, are uh, taking more of our money and leaving us with less for marine services. What a lot of bollocks, eh? So, one, one of 
five Scottish children live in abject poverty while our colonial masters rape us of our resources and rape our nation of our resources, right? Uh, Minister for the Higher Education Sector, Jamie Hepburn, a thank God that Scotland for the report, saying the Scottish Government will consider the um, a report's recommendations on making Scotland's colonial higher education system sustainable. Um, funding for the college sector has fallen by 5% in line with the cut in the Scottish Government's budget by 5% by their imperial masters. Okay, also Wednesday... The Pravda is telling us there's a 2.1 billion black hole in Scotland's finances. They say this. Uh, they say the plan um, rise in the child payment may have to be scrapped. Finance Minister Kate Bob says no, they won't scrap that because that's very important to drag children out of poverty and give them the best chance in life. Okay, and uh, we'll get to the liaison committee. Um, uh, so. There you have it, folks. Apparently, Scotland's balanced budget is now $2.1 billion out of sync because of the cost of living crisis inflation, meaning the money is not gone far, that far. And as you know, as I've just said, the Westminster criminal cabal is cutting Scotland's meager by a, what they call a block grant. It's no, it's a transfer of some of the money back. They're cutting it over the next five years by 15%. Wow. Right, moving on, Wednesday lunchtime rolls around and a, our Imperial Masters in the House of Thieves and Carpetbaggers have Prime Minister's questions. So, Starmer was first to go. Uh, first up, he tells Bojo he's a liar and a liability and he should do the decent thing and resign. Bojo tried to be his bombastic best, saying he'll get on with a day job and then starts his bullshit about the fastest rollout of a, um, vaccines in Europe, highest employment, Best day performing the economy. All the all the classic lies for Bojo. All the classic lies. But it wasn't being born. Anyway, Starmer says to him, resign your bam. And Bojo says no. Next up was Blackford. He tells Bojo Scots will have the three one way or another. He then tells Bojo to go. Bojo tells Blackford Scotland had its say and they should shut up and get back in its box. Get sat doing second class citizen. So, next up was Plaid Cymru leader. Uh, she followed Ian Blackford and she says Bojo's been the greatest recruiting sergeant for Welsh independence. But Liz Roberts tells Bojo it's time to go. Once again, Bojo says no. Right, moving on Wednesday. And back here in Scotland, uh, back here in the colony of Scotland, Health Minister Humza Yusuf says the Scottish Government will eradicate weights of more than two years for elective surgery. They're going to introduce new legislation when the Parliament comes back, legislating to say that nobody can wait any longer than two years for a week of surgery. All right, for all the difference that's going to be. Anyway, uh, opposition parties are cuckoos in the nets to you and me, say the plan is weak and that the, the SNP Green government are shite at running the colony. Okay, moving on Wednesday. And uh, the United Union to ballot workers at Presswick Airport on strike action after the staff were a uh, offered between 4% and 6.5% depending on the rules. Okay. Now, the United Union said with inflation running at 9.1% and the rising pay and the um, and rising, the pay offer was a real terms pay cut. United General Secretary Sam Graham said with retail price index standing at 11.7%, that's inflation, um, a Pay offers needed to be improved. The ballot and strike action to close on July 19th, and uh, that gives the employers at Press Week 12 days to come up with a solution before the ballot's held and they decide on whether or not to strike. Right, moving on, Wednesday evening rolls round, and Bojo the Clown sacks me back, Starwa Gobi. So, on his way out the door, Bojo's decided to get rid of the snake, as he's calling him. All right. Um, eh, then, Bojo's new Chancellor of two days, Nadim Salawi, tells Bojo and a letter that Bojo needs to piss off and give it up. So, Bojo, of course, was hanging on. And it, as of 10.45 last night, eh, when the main news stories had been run for the day, Bojo was still hanging on. As we know, things have 
developed since then, and we'll get a wee bit to that. Uh, can Ian Blackford just take our MPs out? Of course he could. He could uh, Ian Blackford could convene the Scottish Grand Committee and just suspend the bloody Treaty of Union. But they don't appear to be doing so. They appear to be playing by their rules down that road. So, um, now, Bojo uh, was trying to hang on, and he was a... Uh, he was trying to soldier on, but when anyone wanted to fill the 50 vacancies in the cabinet, it's just a matter of time before Bojo had to go. Um, so the psycho drama uh, we are uh, witnessing from our imperial masters really does make it a uh, clear we need independence by any means possible. So that was it, folks. Yesterday we were told we were a colony to shut up, get back in our box, but only there to be exploited for our resources. And that our democratic choices are uh, illegitimate in the UK. So you're a second class fucking citizen, every last one of you, whether you be pro independent or against independent. You're all second class citizens. Yeah. We don't even have a democratic route to sort the problems out, apparently. Thanks, John. I know we are living in a colony. Um, so. That's the situation we find ourselves in, folks. And we find ourselves in a situation as well. If we don't get away, our public services will be sold off. Because there's nothing we can do as they keep decreasing the budget. We will have to put them into the private sector because we can't finance them um, for ourselves through taxation. And that's exactly what's happening here. And with the internal market, but we know that they're going to sell off the NHS. We know that they're going to privatise all our public services. Because when the day in England will be forced to follow suit because of the internal market bill. So there you have it. But hey, we have no democratic rights apparently and we are second class citizens. So there you have it. Right now, on the paper review this morning, as you all know, things have developed. Bojo's decided to resign, but he's staying on as Prime Minister until a new Tory um, leader is elected. So Bojo will still be in number 10 until the autumn. But hey, the papers a day, of course, were all published before Bojo resigns. All right. So what we have in the record, shameless Boris refuses to quit, never-ending Tory. Johnston ignores floods of resignations. PM climbs on, then sacks Gove in revenge. Um, the eye has cabinet coup. And he, that's basically everybody quit the cabinet in order to get Bojo to go. Right. The Times has Johnston fights for his life. As we know, the fight is now over. The Scotsman has an office, but not in power. Well, that's fair enough. Uh, that's true. He's resigned. He's resigned now as Tory leader. He's going to stay on as PM until they find a new leader. Um, the Daily Telegraph, mortally wounded PM, de defies Cabinet's demand that he quits. Well, he hasn't defied it any more. He's um, he told the 1922 committee this morning that he's resigning as Tory party leader, but he's going to stay on as PM until they select a new leader. Right, the National House, Johnson refuses to go, PM defies Cabinet's calls to quit, Gove sacked and called Snake, and FM hits back over um, a, a Section 30 refusal. Um, I have to have that paper, as you know, maybe gets the paper. So, as I say, your democracy is being denied us. The Herald has PM, I'll hang on in there. No, you won't, you're on your spanner. The Dear Scottish Daily Mail has Boris, uh, Boris fights to the death. Well, uh, the night of the long knives is over. It happened to be this morning. <laughs> the Daily Express, the lunatic rag has PM's last stand. Back in your face, political oblivion. So Boris Johnson was actually thinking about calling an election, folks. That was his. He was thinking about calling an election to try and get a new mandate for the people. But he wasn't going to get a new mandate for the people. Um, the Tory party did face political oblivion at this point in time. Right, the Metro has Cabinet urged PM to quit. Get exit done, Boris. Patel Salawi, Sharp, tell Johnson to go, but Prime Minister fights on. Sacks, Snake, Gove. Um, a 42 ministers and aides resign in 24 hours. But as I say, um, a fair the fifth up until this morning, it was 49, but there's been a few more this morning. Um, a full list of them is available, actually, who's all quit his cabinet and what dates. And the star, the star has just Jane. Her agony aunt, Jane O'Gorman, eh, 
um, emergency uh, fiber edition, right? And it's photo case book. Cripes, my work chums say I'm a lying wazzer and they've all deserted me. Dear Jane, there's a picture of Bojo. Dear Jane, I've been caught out telling a few offers and my colleagues have all resigned. How can I convince them I'm not a complete and utter shameless chancer? <laughs> Jane's advice to Bojo's on page four, unfortunately. I've only got the headlines. I'd like to see what it was. The Edinburgh, Edinburgh News has got dragged out. Um, a, a, the Press and Journal has got a Johnson coins on despite near total rebellion of party. Um, the Evening Express, Cameron did everything today uh, to get better and still we lost him. The story about a young man taking his life, suicide. Suicide's quite high at the moment. It always is in young men. It seems to be higher in young men and young women. And the uh, naked cyclist, cyclist she aims, uh, aimed at tandem. Pair on eco awareness journey. Tell of driver trying to knock them off the bike. So that's what the papers have got for us. Um, the papers, of course, were printed before Bojo um, a, informed the 1922 committee that he intends to stand down as Tory party leader. But he's going to hang on until the autumn. So there you have it, folks. The angering thing, of course, for us here in Scotland is it's been made clear to us that our democracy doesn't matter. The people in Westminster don't give a shite about the democratic rights of the Scottish people, and it would appear we don't have any. <clears throat> so it may well be that a plebiscite election is going to be um, the only way out. But uh, as I say, will they respect the result of a plebiscite election? Well, they're trying to rig the rules of it. But as I say, John Swinney and the First Minister covered it. John Swinney said majority of MPs, First Minister said majority of the vote. If you've got the majority of the vote in the first past the post system, you have the majority of MPs. Will Westminster respect it if the SNP don't get 50% plus one of the popular vote? They ain't going to, um, they ain't going to, uh, they're not going to play at all. What we really need today is get our MPs to stand up and say, listen, this is a union. We've decided to rip the treaty up and take a physical copy of the treaty in and rip it up and then get up and leave and never to go back again. Because even if there's one Labour MP, one Tory MP and one Lib Dem MP, they are not representative of Scotland. So it's time. It's time to stop playing by their bloody rules. So it is. Right, that's what I've got for you this morning, folks. I know it's quite a quick one, but yesterday's cycle drama was all running about Boris Johnson, so there was very little other news out there. In fact, even this rag today is full of Boris Johnson and his shenanigans. So very little on what's actually going on. But you've got to remember the Scottish Parliament is in recess at this point in time. Okay, so that's what I've got for you today, folks. Now remember, partisan politics in your pockets. We are now in the fight for our lives. Our very survival as a nation, um, as our democratic rights are gone. So partisan politics in your pockets, eyes on the prize, learn your how you gotties and get out there and win hearts and minds because this is very important. Uh, um, the other thing about plebiscite elections is you know it takes 16 and 17 year olds out of the equation. They don't get their say. Okay, right, support the independent media folks, support broadcast in Scotland, support Independence Live, support Indie Live Radio, support Caledon Media, Norrie's got a crowdfunder gone, the new folks. I was on Norrie's show yesterday. Um, if you have a chance, then uh, if you've got a few shekels to spare, put them in the pot. Because the independent media is becoming more and more important as the loonies and the Pravda go all out to try and uh, deny democracy here in Scotland. All right, and the support independent bloggers and bloggers if they've got a crowdfunder gone, throw some shekels in the pot if you can. And as you know, myself and David don't want your money. We just want you to share this stuff around so that people can be aware of the fact that we are now in a, living in a colony and we are second-class citizens within the United Kingdom. All right. So, uh, um, so as I say, partisan politics and focus folks, we're in the fight of our life here. We're in the very fight for the survival of our nation here. Okay, and uh, as I say, support independent bloggers and bloggers that they important work. Okay, now health messaging. Um, you know, COVID's on the rise again, folks. 
mask up with your enclosed public spaces, clean your hands and surfaces regularly. That's the last two bits of guidance that's out there. If you're feeling a wee bit off, mask up and social distance, use your napper on it. And, folks, a if you're still testing, please submit your test results to um, NHS Scotland to be keeping an eye on this. Now, um, a, have I forgot the Supreme Court application? No, John, I mentioned the Supreme Court. I mentioned that we are new, at the beginning there, we're new waiting on a Supreme Court judgment to see if we can hold the referendum without Westminster's um, permission. But all, all, everybody seems to think that uh, we can't do that. You know, it seems to be that the Supreme Court will rule against the Scottish Parliament. So it looks like it's going to be a plebiscite general election. And uh, so we're in a fight, folks, a real fight here, a very fight for the existence of our nations and our rights as citizens as our democracy is denied. OK, as I say, share this around, folks. Facebook are trying to limit uh, what, we're, what we're doing in the independence movement. So please share this around. We usually look after, look after each other. And I'll be back to do it all again tomorrow. I'll be talking more about Bojo's resignation tomorrow because, as you know, I did a review show. I covered the news for the day before, OK? So can you really get into Bojo's resignation in depth at the moment, folks? OK, look after yourselves. I'll be back to do it all again tomorrow. Um, so have a nice day.